What's up guys, it's Dirt Lifestyle, I'm gonna get organized and I wanna start by creating some sort of a storage system for my Roverlander. In this video, I'm gonna build a storage system for all of my gear, but the underlying theme is to figure out ways to maximize the space that you have and also being choosy as to what gear you include. Before we really get started in today's video, I wanna just really quickly talk about the importance of knowing the size of the gear you're working with. There are so many different sizes of your battery bank setups, of your fridges, of different gear like this. It's very bulky and before you spend the time making a cargo space like we're gonna make today, I mean, you'll see, this is gonna be elaborate. You wanna make sure that you have the fridge that you're gonna want on a week long trip or whatever your needs are gonna be. For me, I have to have a deep cycle way to charge all of my gear because I do a lot of photography. I have to keep it charged up. I have to be able to edit on the trail, things like that. Um, I also need to use this to power the fridge I needed a fridge freezer combo. Not everyone does, but I definitely do because there's salmon where I live and I love to fish. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm fishing for salmon with a bunch of buddies for a week, I can convert this whole thing over to a freezer instead of a fridge freezer and I can vacuum seal being powered with this. All my vacuum sealed salmon can then get tossed into the freezer and I'm not worried about having to go to town or anything like that to get ice or anything. So I had to have a really good sized fridge freezer combo for that that need. The last thing that is bulky for me is is this thing called a Jolka. And what a Jolka is, is this is a way for me to shower on the on the trail. This is a hot water tank. It's also um, a sink so I can wash dishes. This is something that looks bulky, but believe it or not, this covers a whole lot of issues whenever you're going to be off road for a week. Um, all in this one little package. So these items are things that I cannot compromise on and so I got them all out on the table so I can pull some dimensions off of them. I can see how the best ways to fit them back here and this is definitely the first step that I recommend you do as well. The majority of this project is going to be built out of wood in conjunction with little bits of aluminum here and there. The basket that we're going to use to slide the fridge in and out is going to be made out of some 2x2x8 two by two by inch angled aluminum. We're going to TIG weld it together in a shape that makes sense and we're just going to start bolting things together and see how they fit. In terms of gear storage, I think the Land Rover Discovery 2 has a big advantage over a lot of other 4x4s in a way that a lot of people don't think, and that is the vertical space back here. This is really tall, because if you look at the side profile of the Disco, it has like a normal roof like anything else, and then once it gets to the rear two seats, it goes up and then back, and we have all of this height back here. So the smartest way to maximize what we have available to us is gonna be try and take advantage of vertical space. Um, you know, we could just pile a whole bunch of gear back here, but that's, it'll just be an unorganized mess and you'll be pulling everything out to get to one thing and we don't want that. So my idea is to do a vertical wall, basically floor to ceiling right here, floor to ceiling right here, and then we're gonna have the fridge freezer right here, some drawers right here, and where I'm sitting, somewhere around chest level above the fridge freezer, we're gonna have a flat platform and that will allow us to stack a whole bunch more goods in this vertical space. I have a net that I wanna go across the front, so if I pack it real tight in this little stop, top storage area, I can put the net around and then whenever I pull this, because you know we stopped middle of the day, I wanna get something to drink, I can open this, none of my gear is gonna fall out, I can slide the fridge out, I can get something cold to drink. Um, the other advantage of having these vertical walls is because I have these gold wing windows on the sides of the disco, I'll have this extra cavity right here and extra cavity right there for extra storage. And I can even put some shelving in or store some things hanging on the inside of that wall. So I think that this is a way to really maximize how tall this is and make it to where we can stack a whole bunch of gear on top of each other while still being able to access the things on the bottom.
actually be able to see what it is in my head that I have been visualizing. I want to have drawers. We're going to be building drawers later on in the video. This is going to be on a slide here. Um, this is going to be storage with a net going across the front. We still have a little bit of woodworking to do, but not a whole lot. So I want to build something to seal this and it'll be carpeted just to give it a really nice look. Same thing on the other side. And then on the opposite side back here, this is something I haven't talked about yet. I wanted to have a netted storage area back here too. So we have like eight inch void or something like that, that if we wanted to put blankets, pillows, whatever. So if our kids are starting to get cold in the back or we can even put diaper stuff back here, whatever, it's easy to access, it's easy to get to, and it just helps to break things up and make it easier to be that much more organized. I chose this three quarter inch MDF for a reason. It's really rigid, it's really strong, and it's got a smooth finish. It's gonna look good with carpet going over the top of it, and it's something that I'm very familiar with and very comfortable with. I have a little trick that I like to do when I work with this stuff and I add carpet where I double seam all the edges in order to keep you from seeing the staples. So I staple an edge, I spray adhesive, I roll it over the adhesive, and then at the very end, I spray adhesive over that edge and then double overlap it to make it to where you don't see any staples. And I think it gives it a really nice clean finish. Now we've made it to the fun part. We've got two 300 pound, three, three or 400 pound, I don't remember, slides, and they should go full length. These are pretty heavy duty. Oh yeah. What we're gonna do is we're gonna build what I would call a basket. I don't know what else to call it, but some sort of a supporting structure that's gonna go around the bottom rim of this fridge and then we're gonna connect it to the slides and then we're gonna connect the slides to the inside of the rover. I've got my budget fridge slide all hooked up. It seems to be working fine. I have the fridge plugged in. I use this uh, ARB tie down setup. It was super simple and everything seems to be working really well together. So we've got a fridge, we've got a fridge that slides and it is plugged into my battery bank, which you won't be able to see, but it fits perfect in the void that used to be a seat. So I'm gonna have the battery bank plugged in back here. Um, I have a, a cable that I haven't plugged in yet, but the battery bank is gonna be plugged into the rover. And then every time I start the rover, it'll top the battery bank back up. And the battery bank is extremely deep cycle. So it will keep this fridge running for days in between charging. So this is a very nice little system that I have just all bolted together that has been in my mind for a while and I'm getting really excited. For those of you who don't know, I am a huge fan of music. I had a sub in this before and I absolutely plan on keeping it. So we're gonna have to build a custom sub box to fit into our new dimensions. I did some rough math here because you need to calculate your airspace whenever you are figuring out how big of a sub box to make. This is a 10 inch sub, so I looked it up online. This is the smallest we could go and this is the biggest we can go. And this is measured in cubic feet. You can calculate cubic feet with these with this formula here. And so I plugged in the dimensions. I toyed around with the dimensions to figure out what would work the best. Um, and then I calculated it all out. And this is about what we're gonna end up with right here. Um, I, this is really close anyway. I didn't calculate the thickness of the actual box, but either way, we're well within the smallest and the biggest. So I'm gonna build a little sub box. We're gonna put it basically right behind this seat and it's gonna be in front of the drawer. 
So we're going to build the sub box, get it all plugged in, and then we can build our drawer, and I think I'm going to put a shelf on top of the drawer. I'm fully aware that a lot of you guys don't care about watching me build a speaker box today, but this is a part that will be integrated in with this system, so I think that it's important to include it in this video. If you're trying to build the best sounding speaker box possible, there is a little bit more information that you're going to need than what I've provided here, but if you're someone like me that just wants to crank some tunes and have a little bit of extra bass, this formula works perfect. I like the way this turned out. There is a lot of room for creativity in the future. Um, this drawer turned out really nice, I think. It slides well. This is made for like the side of a speaker box. Like if you're into guitars and stuff, you'll probably recognize this. Another Amazon purchase, of course. And this little cubby goes all the way through. Whenever I fold the seat down, um, it's gonna allow me to lay longer items in here if I don't have a passenger. And then I'm gonna, going to get some smaller netting, this stretchy netting right here. I'm gonna put a net right here and then a net on the other side. And then that way, if I have gear that I don't wanna have slide forward or whatever, it'll just stay in the confines of the net. There's clearly a lot of room left for improvement and this is in no way done. All we've done today is build the framework. And now I wanna move on to something creative. I'd like to make kind of a mural type thing in the back. Um, I'm gonna do a topo style with my bead roller, so we'll see. I am very new to using the bead roller, but I love little challenging projects like this, and I wanna add a little bit of flair to this organizer system. I know there's gonna be a whole bunch of questions asked about different details of this. And so I was thinking about what questions I might get asked while I was finishing up these last few steps. By the way, what do you think of the topo? I think the topo is a nice touch. I'm sure some people are gonna comment that it's too much, but to me, those little details can really help a project pop. It's definitely sloppy beadwork. I am brand, brand new at using a bead roller, but either way, I stand by it. It's art after all, so it can be a little flawed. Now back to the questions I think I'm gonna get. Um, the weight, this adds a lot of weight. Um, I, I'm figuring with gear and all the wood that I just added, I think that I'll have somewhere between 300 and 400 pounds um, of weight in the back of the Rover. So that's quite a bit, but it, it is within the realm of something that is practical for an SUV of this size. I mean, it's made to have two extra people in the back, so I don't think that this is gonna be too big of a problem. Long term, this will end up being on bags. It'll have some bags in the back in order to help keep everything level whenever I'm wheeling and you can really dial in the ride that way. But for now, I'm just gonna rock it. I'm gonna go on a trip. I'm leaving for California tomorrow. I'm gonna go on a big trip. Uh, I'm gonna be camping for a week 
and we'll see how all of this plays out. Another question I think people are gonna be asking me is lighting. I've already got a whole bunch of LED lights that I wanna wire in, I just don't have time. So being able to use it for a week will help me figure out exactly where I wanna put those lights. And uh, I really look forward to being able to add some of those smaller details into this in the future. I know I'm gonna get some questions about what I'm gonna do with these little side hatches. I want to, one of them will probably get a molly panel. I'll probably buy a molly panel, screw it in there, and then use a whole bunch of molly stuff. If you're not familiar with what molly is, it's like this system um, that you see in a lot of military applications. And it's like, you can like weave stuff into the molly panel and you can have all these different bags you can unzip for like first aid kit or you know ammo if you like to shoot a lot, whatever. So I wanna have a molly panel just to open up the options of things I can stick to the wall. And then on the other side, I think I'm gonna put all of my cooking stuff on the wall. So like all of my cooking stuff, all of my eating stuff, everything involved with the kitchen will go on one side. But we'll see, this is all going to evolve over time. And I think that I just need to get out and use it. I think I have a really good framework to go out and, and experiment and uh, see what I like, see what I don't like, and then I can go from there and it's gonna be a lot easier to come up with the ideas that I need in order to move forward once I can figure out what problems I have in the field. If you like the video and you wanna see more like it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I do a lot of how-to content on this channel. Um, I go from mild to wild. And if you look through my videos, you'll see what I'm talking about. Some of it's just adventure videos of me and my buddies wheeling. Some of it's gonna be overlanding videos. Some of it is building things like this. And then there's, I'll build suspension from scratch or even do some welding tutorials. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you stick around and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna help support the channel, you can go to thedirtlifestyle.com. We have t-shirts, hats, we have net gaiters, we have all kinds of things on there. We also have a link to our Patreon account if you feel like you wanna help support us that way as well. If you wanna follow me on social media, I'm at Dirt Lifestyle Nate. We'll see you next time.